everybody welcome to a new sewing video this time i am starting with this tunic here which is a sort of nice dusky purpley lilac color it's a really nice brocade fabric almost but i think this is a silk it feels like silk to me with a silk viscose lining um this one does have a zip on the back so i'm probably going to keep the zip because that's quite useful just to keep but the rest of it i might just completely cut away the outer layer and just use the lining and start afresh from that. I did that with my last dress, the yellow one, and I really enjoyed having that sort of creativity. So I might even, I might even drop the neckline, I'm not sure. So I haven't really thought too much about this one yet. I haven't even had chance yet to gather all my bits of fabric. Usually at this point I hold up, I've got this scarf, I've got this pair of trousers and I'm gonna cut them up. I haven't got that far yet um, and to be honest I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to have chance to get started on this properly until tomorrow but as it's on my mind and I'll be mulling over decisions overnight I thought I may as well come and show you what it is I'm getting started on. So if you're new here welcome I share vlogs and other videos as well as regular sewing videos I make dresses for my clothing company called Threads of a Fairy Tale yeah the clues in the name they tend to be fairy tale style clothes and I think this one will be the same well, I'm gonna do a big poofy dress that will be suitable for a special occasion so I'll probably be back tomorrow <laughs> and show you the bits of fabric that I gather to use on it and my first ideas and then when I get going and I tend to speed up the video otherwise it would last for weeks so hope you enjoy watching and I'll see you soon hello I'm back I have been fabric collecting all around the house and this is what I have managed to find and I've got a big pile this isn't just it but I've got another pile sort of on the floor by my feet of off cuts of this lovely I think it's polyester actually but it's a crepe at fabric and it's got really nice flowy drape to it it's quite heavy this is from when I made a clash of clans cloak for somebody I'm hoping it's not too heavy but it's still got nice flow even though it is so I might use it as frills around the around the hem because when you've got a heavy hem it just makes the whole dress sway really nicely so I've got that I have this grey sort of tunic dress which is from Monsoon which I think I picked up amongst jumble once upon a time and I had wanted to incorporate more grey but I could not find any grey anywhere I've got a real lacking of grey fabrics so unfortunately it's this isn't going to be a lilac and grey as grey as I'd hoped but I've got this which I shall definitely incorporate is it lined no it's not lined so we've only got one layer which is a shame but this dress which came from my local theatre amateur dramatics group it's, it's quite a nice shape actually but it has got this really pretty grey and white floral pattern so I might change my mind over this I'm not sure we'll see how we go I think this must have also come from the theatre group or perhaps I picked it up in a vintage sale I can't keep track of where I get this these things from but this is a very vintage dress from Blaine's London gosh it says size 20 now that ain't a size 20 anymore so very 1980s sort of cocktail dress but it's a lovely lovely lilac lace and I've been looking for more lace I definitely want more lace in my fabric stash as well plus I will probably reuse the lining of this uh, it's got quite a nice sturdy zip actually so I'll keep hold of that maybe for another project so again now <laughs> now I'm in too much now seeing it's got a good zip I'm thinking oh maybe I should just keep this separate and alter this oh, I can never make my mind up over these things we'll see how we go I also found the matching trousers that go with that tunic that I'm starting with lots of lovely flowy fabric in these so I'm definitely going to use that and then lastly I've got another pair of sour trousers these I have dyed myself with I think this was just from leftover dye from another project and so I thought well it seems to be still pigmented so I'll chuck something else in. I really like the mottled effect that you get when you're just dying in a bucket and this has got gorgeous don't I can't remember what this sort of metallic dot work is called is it Makesh work it's like tiny dots of metal pressed into the fabric it's so unusual but so effective and sparkly and lovely so I'm gonna use that and this is lined with cotton so I might nick this lining because actually the lining has gone quite grey so I'll use that probably to help line the dress that's that for now oh no I found some more grey just a few scrappy bits of grey out of my scrappy scrappy scrap 
<laughs> scrap box. These are the offcuts from a dress I made to go and see Swan Lake. I wanted a special dress 19 years ago I made. I've kept this for. So yeah, again, nice flowy fabric. So I'll incorporate that somehow. And uh, right, off we go. <laughs> Okay, this is what we're gonna deal with. I've taken away most of the fabric down the front. I have kept the sleeves, but I will probably patchwork over the top of a lot of this. And there I've kept the back as well, because the zip is gonna be useful. And yeah, we just have these gaps at the sides to fill in. So that's what we are starting off with. starting to come together you can't see it very well in this clip but all of the the netting is now sewn on and also I cut up that dress with that that floral pattern and the next thing I'm going to use is is this tunic dress I really like this grey it's going to blend really nicely between the sort of purpley lilac plummy lilac of this top bit and the grey bits that I've used in the rest of the skirt it's going to look nice together and just quickly, so the lighting here is so weird at this time of night. Next up is a scarf that was actually, I only just brought down from upstairs in my uh, wardrobe where I've been having a declutter. And I bought this scarf, I think it was at Glastonbury Festival, I'm sure it was. It's not one I've worn very much, so I decided I would add it to this dress because I'm actually really lacking in grey fabric. I didn't realise how little I had. So yeah, this is now gonna become part of the dress. The 
dress is coming together now nicely. I'm loving the poofiness of the skirt. Uh, one thing I am going to change though, we're on the back side of it now. I cut up the back and added a triangle of purple fabric here to give the back a bit more, just a bit more room. However, it does sort of peep out at the bottom sometimes and I'm, I would imagine that when you're swishing around and dancing or whatever, this will poke out. And at first I didn't think that was a problem. I thought I was going to add a little bit of purple around the edge of several other pieces. And I've even gathered tons of it down here. But I think I've changed my mind on this because I quite like this paleness. I like the fact that it's sort of going to flow up into the lilac-y colour. I think originally I thought having purple at the bottom would sort of balance it a bit. But I think I'm going to just go with the the flow of the colours down to the paler sort of greys at the bottom underneath that might peep out. So yes, I'm going to actually cut this out. I'm just going to cut it out and swap it over. I know it's going to mean a little bit of unpicking here and here, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem just to cut it out and add in instead some of the grey beautiful silky chiffon that I've got left over. That's going to go in there instead, I think. So at this point where it's all coming together, I can, I think I can put all this away. I don't know whether this sort of woven fabrics and the silky chiffons would be up to having that much weight sewn on them. So I think that's another reason why it's probably a good idea not to go ahead with that idea. And instead, I've still got the whole of the pair of trousers, which is voluminous trousers so there's plenty of fabric there also still bits of I think that's the a part of the outer layer still to use I think I might just stick with them for the rest of it for the top half um have some pieces flowing down over the grey I might still use this lilac it goes really nicely or I might just save that for another item because it does have a nice, it does have a good solid drawstring already attached. So I might turn that into a skirt actually. So we'll see how we go. And I've also changed my mind on this lacy dress. In some lights, I think maybe under the artificial light, even though it's meant to be a daylight bulb, those colours don't look like they go, but I think they do look like they go right now. So I might change my mind on that. I might still use it, but I don't, I don't know if I need to. I might just save this whole dress for another item. I confess I was editing this video and I realised I hadn't got the last clip where I show you the finished dress so uh, I've come along uh, quite a few months almost a year later to do the ending of the video I hope you don't mind so as you can see I used a variety of antique lace and also modern lace from my stash to cover the front of the bodice part of the dress I used the trim off the edge of the grey scarf just here and other little bits of scraps as well 
and generally I just patchwork together the pieces of this sort of brocade silk fabric over the top to complete the look. But I love the way I've gone from dark down to light. I definitely feel I made the right decision not using the darker purple um, on the hem like I originally had. And yeah, I think it would be a really nice fairy tale ball gown and even a, a really special occasion like a wedding perhaps. I think it would be really pretty. Um, it's definitely got that proper fairy tale shape. I did the photo shoot. I think this is why I forgot to do the ending because I took this dress with me to Devon on a trip last year to do the photo shoot for it and I, I really did feel like a princess wearing it. I really want to capture that feeling when you wear one of my dresses and because I get to model them I do feel like when I put one on it's like oh I, just, I feel like a fairy princess and so it's really nice that I get to share that feeling to whoever buys the clothes. Yeah I'm lucky that I haven't actually sold this online since making this or I wouldn't be able to finish the video. So yeah, if uh, if you are interested in purchasing it, it is available on my Etsy shop, Threads of a Fairy Tale, soon on my new website, which will be at threadsofafairytale.com, as, just as soon as I get that shop sorted on there. I have mentioned, I think in the, in the voiceover of the last sewing video, that I am gonna be doing a course soon, but later this year, there'll definitely be the first sewing course from me. So if you're interested in that, please do sign up to my newsletter. I'll put the link below and then uh, then you'll be the first to hear about it. And I think that's all for me to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. If you have friends that you think might be interested, please do share the link with them. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.